quantum mechanics. Do you two know how scientists identify the substances in distant stars? Do you know how we measure the composition of the sun, for example? Sure. One major tool is spectral analysis, isn't it? Yes, indeed. I am familiar with the results of spectral analysis, but I am a bit unsure of how the spectra arise to begin with. Chaucer, is that part of our material for today? Yes, it is, Diana. In fact, it is the starting point. Let's use Professor Peabody's Wayback Machine, since we don't have one of our own, and look at a little science history. Jeeves? Traveling to the 1750s, we find that scientists were putting different substances in flames and passing the resultant light through a prism. They found that the hot gases given off by the burning materials emit different colors of light or spectra. For example, ordinary table salt generated a bright yellow spectra. Furthermore, not all the colors of the rainbow appeared. There were dark gaps in the spectrum. In fact, for some materials, there were just a few patches of light. By the 1820s, they recognized that spectra provided an excellent way to detect and identify small quantities of an element in a powder that was put into a flame. Meanwhile, the white light of the sun was also being examined closely. And in 1802, it was discovered that the solar spectrum itself had tiny gaps. There were many thin, dark lines in the rainbow of colors. But the reason for spectral lines in the light and the relationship to each substance was a real mystery.